I've always said that Victor Hugo's novel is the greatest source material for any musical ever written. It's what parents read to their kids when they're growing up, and it's got this extraordinary place in the, in the French classical canon. The story is universal, and I probably never would have read it if I had not have actually been in this. He describes Fantine's soul powerfully, and that just gave me a greater resolve in my performance to really go there, to try to interpret the feeling that his words gave me. The thing with Victor Hugo is that he gives hope, but not only that, he puts our world into question. Victor Hugo is not only the most creative and productive writer of the French 19th century, he is the embodiment of 19th century France. He wrote poetry, of course, novels, short stories, pamphlets, non-fiction, memoir, plays, but not only that, he was very gifted for drawing. He was very interested in photography. He was very good in mathematics, in physics, in biology. He's interested in engineering. He is the universal mind. Victor Hugo was born in 1802 and died in 1885, so he, basically he covers the whole century. He was the son of uh, the General Hugo, who was the, the general of the First Empire. And Sophie Trebuchet was his mother, and she was a monarchist. And his childhood was not very happy because the couple quarreled very often. They disagree on many topics, uh, specifically politically, and they soon lived uh, separately. First, he took the side of his monarchist mother, but slowly he changed his mind about his father and about the Napoleonic era. So in that regard, uh, Marius in Les Miserables is not so far from the young Victor Hugo. Here they talked of revolution. Marius was raised by monarchist grandfather and then changed his mind about his father who died in Waterloo. Victor Hugo and Adèle Fouché met when they were seven and six, so they were really childhood friends. But the families didn't want this marriage, and they quarreled about that. And he had to wait for his mother's death in 1822 to marry Adèle. He was really madly in love with her. After three years and a half of engagement, Victor Hugo married her, and they had five children. I have to say that Adèle Fouché was the first not to be faithful to her husband because she had an affair around 1830 with saint who was a very famous critic and writer in France, and a friend of Victor Hugo. In 1833, Victor Hugo met with an actress who had a role in Lucrèce Borgia, which is a Victor Hugo play, and she was a very charming young actress called Juliette Drouet, and they fell madly in love with each other. Their first night together, which was in, on February 16, will be the same date as Marius and Cosette's first night. So it's a, like a hint in the novel. We'll remember that night. Their love lasts for 50 years until Juliette's death in 1883. So it was really a long life love. Juliette was a very charming, delicate person. She was a beautiful writer. She wrote about 20,000 letters to Victor Hugo, one more beautiful than the other. Mm -hmm. 
Victor Hugo loved her, of course, deeply in return, but he had other love affairs. At the same time, he had a love affair with Juliette Drouet, but she forgave him. Adèle Fouché finally met Juliette Drouet after many, many decades, and the two women got along, more or less. Here we are in the apartment where Victor Hugo lived from 1832 until 1848. He was the great romantic writer. He started to write Les Miserables here. It's also the years when he started to be more and more involved in politics. Victor Hugo was a, a philosopher and quite a political philosopher. He actually became mayor in his own life, I believe. We are in the dining room of Victor Hugo's house. It was a rented apartment, and he lived there until 1848, until the revolution. He had started to write Les Miserables in 1845, and then was interrupted by the revolution of 1848. He had to leave France in 1852, right after the coup d'etat of Napoleon III. Victor Hugo protested and called Napoleon III a traitor of France, and of course he was banned from his country. And when Victor Hugo went to exile, Juliette Drouet had to give up her career in order to devote herself to Victor Hugo. Hugo went to Jersey. He spent there a few years, and then he was expelled from Jersey because he defended so-called terrorists in Jersey. So he went to Guernsey until 1870. He was persona non grata in France, and so he finished Les Miserables in good old British soil in Guernsey over 16 years. He said, I won't go back to France until the downfall of Napoleon III. And he kept his promises. He dared to say everything he liked and to achieve and to write whatever he wanted to, and he paid it a very dear price. Les Miserables was published in April 1862, and right away it was a huge popular success. About 100,000 copies were sold, and it was very popular abroad. I mean, he did write a, a letter to his publisher saying, I didn't just write a French story for the French, I wrote an Italian story for the Italians. And I wrote an American story for the Americans. And in fact, Civil War troops, they all had a copy in their saddlebag to the point that they were known as Lee's Miserable. It is set in a particular era, 1800s, in early 1800s in France, but it feels timeless. Sadly, human nature rarely learns from itself, and all the themes that Hugo <laughs> discusses in it and tells so brilliantly are happening in our world again and again. I mean, the Occupy Wall Street movement and the French Revolution started in a similar way. They were slow burns. It, wasn't, it took a while to really take off. Les Miserables is, is, is one of the great celebrations of the idea that we, as a mass, as a people, can rise up and change our circumstance um, for the better. And the, and the French Revolution was, it was a very painful time for France, where it took many decades um, for France to arrive at a, at, a, at a new and more just identity as a society. Um, and, and I think that the story gives us all hope that it's still possible to overcome some of the hurdles facing us socially at the moment. Everywhere you have people who want a better life, a better world, you have Victor Hugo's legacy.
When he died, many people from everywhere came to Paris to remember him. He was beyond everyone. I mean, he was considered one of the greatest men, quite rightly, that France has ever produced, and indeed, the world has ever produced. We all hope to leave a better world for our children. And Victor Hugo knew all that. The genius is that not only did he have all that in his head, but he was able to put it on paper. And one of the things that I love about the book is it's an exploration of love in all its profundity, using language that is some of the most beautiful I've ever read. It's a colossal and masterful work, and, and it was a great joy to have an excuse to, to read it. It's a remarkable book that just ignites your heart and, I know it sounds poetic, but just illuminates your soul. Thank you, Victor Hugo.